Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. This is for the June Snacku box. Yes, they always look the same. Um, yeah. Uh, the, they always come wrapped in like a cloth type thing that actually we've been keeping, my wife and I, because we can use it for like stuffing uh, gift bags. And instead of putting tissue paper in, you can put those in because they're more col colorful and they're reusable and durable. So that's just a cool thing. But uh, always excited when I'm doing these uh, unboxings. I know I don't get a ton of views on these videos. It's some of my lesser viewed ones um, other than my book reviews because not a lot of people want to want to read. But um, it's just fun. I love doing it. So the fact that there's anyone out there who watches this video is enough for me. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoy. But real quick, hit that subscribe. If you like this video, if you like any videos I do, you can pay me back by just hitting that subscribe. Literally takes you a second, totally painless, and it can mean a lot for me. But let's get into this June Snacku. As usual, cool artwork on their little insert. Uh, so this is, I think the focus is like rural Japan. Yeah. I believe it's a uh, rural. Uh, if you want to read like the little intro thing up at the top, go ahead, and then I'll just I'm just gonna scroll. If you wanna do do do, look at any of those things ahead of time. But obviously, I'm gonna eat them, so I'm gonna tell you what's up with all of these. Now, here's the thing: I I looked at this ahead of time. I always look at it ahead of time because I want to know going into the unboxing if there's anything I need to get. Because in the past, they had like one thing that was like a matcha drink that was a powder. So I needed to have water ahead of time. So I always look for that type of stuff. Um, but since I looked ahead, like this looks like it's probably going to be another very strong box. And I will say Snacku's always been good. I don't think I've ever had a box where I was like, I hate that. Um, but there have been ones that are like better than others. I feel like the last bunch of months, they've been on a really good run of really good boxes. So Shigeki at Snacku, great job, man. It's been awesome. Oh, yes. So if you guys want to see, this is all the stuff in there. Looks like a good time. All right. So first thing. So this is the first thing I saw. Oh, I'm excited about this thing. So this is a Fukui Peanut Senbai. First of all, love standby. Second of all, love peanuts. Um, and anything like peanut butter. Oh, my cat's like staring at it. You can't eat this, Chloe. You can't eat this. So here's the description. Fukui has many historical sites dotted around the prefecture. Foremost among them is a Eheji Temple, the center of Buddhism in Japan. Fukui has also been the center of power for many feudal lords and is home to the Maruoka Castle. The castle is also known as the Mist Castle, which comes from a legend about thick mist hiding the fortification from approaching enemies. These peanut senbai are baked in a firewood kiln and are a winner of the International Monday Selection Competition. So, award-winning snack? Sounds good. Ooh, guys, smell that peanut. That peanut is strong. And that's good for me. Because, like I said, love peanut stuff. So it kind of looks like a pancake that is kind of shaped a little bit like a lid. You see how there's like a dip here? It's a little concave. Um, it's like a pancake, but it's but it's like a little bit hard. So it's like it's kind of like a cookie that's that's baked, so it's harder as opposed to being like a soft cookie. Um, smells. It just it just smells like peanut and peanut butter. Like that's all it smells like. And it smells actually pretty sweet too. Oh my god. I think it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. As you can hear. It's very crunchy. I like that. I'm big on texture. I would like crunchy things. Like I think I've said before, like when I do toast, I want my toast to be like almost burnt. Mm. Oh, man. You can see the actual, like, peanuts in there. This kind of tastes like the cookie form of peanut brittle. It's got, like, those really buttery, kind of, like, molasses-y um, caramel notes along with so much, so much, so much peanut and peanut butter. And it's sweet, but it's not, like, crazy sweet. 
But as far as Japanese snacks go, it's more on the sweet side than what I'm used to for Japanese snacks, which is fine because it's still less sweet than what you'd end up getting in the United States. It was really good. Oh, I can't eat too much of that right now, though, because it is tough to bite into that thing. Maybe it's just because I'm getting old. I don't know. I thought I'd have more teeth issues as I age. Pretty common. Anyway, that's really good. That's a great start. Love it. All right, let's go right here. Uh, this is one. I only have one of them in here. It is black sesame cookie. Black sesame is slowly kneaded into the cookie dough to make these delicious bite-sized cookies. This is one of the popular snacks on the side, not part of the theme. The last one was part of the theme. All right, so I love sesame. Oh, it's got a, look at this. It's got like a picture of it with beer on the back. I'm big into beer. These should pair well with beer, maybe? I guess they're supposed to be like black crackers because it's kneaded in. That makes sense. And it looks like it's, yeah, it's got like a resealable top, which is cool. It smells kind of like coffee, to be honest. It's got like a, like a, um, like a roasty coffee note. Yeah, it smells like coffee. It smells like coffee. That's really weird. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. Kind of cool. Salty, but not too salty, like a little salty. It's a really, it's actually the texture. It's very velvety in my mouth. It's very, very soft, coats your mouth. It's kind of like, it has the consistency of like a Cheez-It cracker, but it doesn't taste anything like a Cheez-It. I definitely taste that sesame. That sesame is outstanding. That flavor is really good. It's like a really nice sesame flavor that's strong with a little bit of like a butteriness to it and a little bit of a saltiness oh my gosh these are killer i really love that like i said i'm big on sesame i love sesame if you're not a sesame person these are not going to be okay for you you're going to hate them because they are like so much sesame it's unbelievable they do have like a nice little roast on them that is a little coffee like i really dig this these are damn good. Wow. I really like that. Man. That's so good. So I will tell you this. Um, I do a craft beer podcast called Brutal Battle. B-R-E-W-T-A-L. You can get it on like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, all that. Or the website that's just BrutalBattle.com. So every now and then I'll do we do special episodes where we match beers with food and well it'll usually be one type of food so i was thinking of actually doing a beer and japanese snacks pairing episode so if you want to check that out when we eventually get to it that'd be cool um those would be good for that especially because they have the picture on the back with beer all right moving on what is this oh no i'm gonna have to i'm gonna save that that's weird <laughs> i'm gonna save that that's something weird uh, that'll be interesting. Okay, so let's do this one. Throw that over there. Sorry if you hear my cat scratching on things. She's weird. Um, wasabi puffs. This is actually also part of the popular snacks portion on the side. Wasabi puffs. It kind of looks like, I don't know, like wasabi corn nuts or something. Mini corn puffs dusted in wasabi powder. That sounds good. I like wasabi. I like dusted corn puffs, which we've had some kind of like that in this before. Does it smell? Yeah, it smells a little wasabi-like. It actually has a little bit of like a soy, soy sauce type smell too. There you go. Very crunchy. Yeah. So the consistency and the crunch and the, the puffed fluffiness of it is kind of similar to some of those rice crackers you can get in the United States in grocery stores, like, it will be like Chinese rice crackers. It's kind of like that, but then there's this really quick hit of like a hot wasabi, but it doesn't say stay hot for a long time. It's kind of like, it was hot up front and then it dies down real quick. You can definitely taste the corn flavor in there too, which goes well with the wasabi. And it's relatively salty. 
yeah, relatively salty. If you like wasabi and corn, this is nice. It's a nice marriage of those two flavors. I like that as well. I'm not I, I don't like it as much as the first two. But that's like a nice little snacky thing. Mm, that could actually be good with beer as well, like an IPA. Let's see how with an IPA. All right, moving on. What is this? I don't know what this one is. I don't know if there's two of them or not. I don't think there's two of them. We got one of these, unfortunately. So, okay. I think I'm going to have to open it first. Oh, no. I think it's the Kochi Rice Senbai. In which case, this is also one of them. And this is one of them, I think. Oh, uh-huh. It's kind of like a assortment. It's like three different ones. Just what it looks like. Yeah, so these three. All right. So it is... Kochi is located in the southern coast of Shikoku, which is Japan's small main island. Kochi is the home of Sakamoto Ryoma, a prominent figure and ronin wandering samurai who led the movement to overthrow the Tokugawa, Tokugawa shogunate, uh, to end the era of the samurai and modernized Japan. We've included three types of senbai rice crackers, from this region, seaweed, shrimp, and yuzu citrus. Okay, so I'm not gonna do the shrimp or seaweed because I feel like we have a lot of those types of flavors in this box typically, so I'm gonna do the yuzu one because that sounds interesting, especially for a senbai. I don't think I've ever had a senbai with the yuzu flavor. For people who don't know, yuzu is like, like, yeah, it's like a citrusy type thing. I think it's between like, it's supposed to be between like an orange and a Meyer lemon or something like that. Yeah, so it looks like a cookie, like a very thin, well-baked cookie. Oh, man, you can smell the yuzu coming right off that thing. It's very bright smell. Yeah, it smells like a little lemony. Yeah, like lemon and orange mixed together. Oh, that's a really nice smell. Oh, it tastes a good amount of it. And it's not very sweet. It's very much in control. There's a little bit of a buttery finish to it. But it's a lot of that citrusy yuzu. I like it. Mm. And I got like, it's kind of like hard caramelized little pieces of yuzu that are kind of sprinkled in there. I can't, I put it up but you can't really see it. That's really good. It's, it's really like light and kind of refreshing. I feel like this is a type of snack that if you're into having tea and like, cookies and biscuits with tea that this would be a really good choice to go with it that's nice and it's not it's not a typical snack either like it's something a little different i like that that is fun okay moving on all right this is this is an interesting one this is burdock crackers so i, I don't think i've ever had burdock root before but i know of burdock root i think it's used a lot in japan uh, healthy rice crackers infused with organic burdock root. Okay, not much of a description. It's burdock crackers. I'm going to get it open without... There we go. This kind of smells like green peppers. Yeah, kind of smells like green peppers, which is weird. You can see these crackers here. There we go. Yeah, they're like well puffed. Yeah, it smells vegetal. It smells like it smells like green peppers. They're they're kind of crunchy, but they're actually kind of soft at the same time, which I really like. Um, they taste almost like a parsnip, with a little bit of a green pepper flavor it's like parsnips and green peppers mixed together and like parsnips are actually kind of sweet it's less sweet than a parsnip and there's a decent saltiness on these and a little kick of sweet on the very end this is actually really good those are nice that's a really awesome snack these are the types of ones that like 
if I'm not focusing on eating these, I, I could just like eat this whole thing and then real not realize it until it's gone. And I'm just like, did I just eat all those? Like these go down so easy and it's like a nice flavor, but it's not like a crazy amount where it demands that you're fully paying attention. That's good. Hmm. Another really good one. Yeah, that that note in there of like a green pepper is kind of weird, but it but it tastes good. It goes well. Hmm. I've always wondered what burdock root tastes like. Now I know. Very cool. All right, let's jump around here a little bit. Let's go to. Oh, and that one also was one of the popular snacks. So let's. Oh, and the kochi rice senbai was one of the themed ones. This, I think, is the Tokushima Sudachi Pie, but I'm going to have to open it to, to verify that first. Cool packaging. I like the packaging. It's the only thing that's kind of like this, so, yeah. All right, so it just look, it looks like a little bun. Yeah, just looks like a little pastry bun. So this would be that, I believe. Yep. Tokush Sorry, excuse me, I burped. Tokushima Sudachi Pie. Tokushima is located in the eastern coast of Shigoku. Uh, Shikoku, I'm sorry. Tokushima is a nature lover's paradise with deep gorges, untouched forests, and beautiful coastlines. It is also home to the Awa Odori, an ancient dance festival held in August. These slow-baked mini pastry puff pies are made using Sudachi lime grown in the region. I don't, I don't smell any citrus. I guess maybe that's going to be on the inside. It just tastes, it, like, it smells, like, bready, yeasty, a little bit sweet. And there's something else on there that I can't describe. It's kind of flaky. Yeah, it's, like, a little flaky. And then, yes, I don't know, the light's kind of distorting it. But that is, like, a light green color. Very light green. So it definitely tastes like... A buttery pastry on the outside. I'm trying to figure out what that inside is like. So the inside is kind of like a bean. Like a, you know, like they have like the red bean paste, but it's like a white bean. It's like that consistency of like a little bit grainy. And it does have a slight citrus to it. And it is sweet. It's fine. I'm actually not huge on this. But yeah, as I as I continue to sit here, the citrus comes out more and more and more. It's becoming more pronounced. But it's still not crazy. Um, if you don't like like bean paste, Anko. It that's the name for it, for the bean paste, Anko. So it's kind of like an Anko. If you're if you're not into that flavor, you're probably not going to like that. It's okay. I'm not I'm not huge on it. It's all right. Let's move on then. Um, okay, what is this? This looks interesting. Oh, this is one of, another one of the themed ones. This is a Shimane fig cookie. Shimane fig cookie. Let's see, there's some figs here. Do -do, nothing on the back. Shimane is a, a the second least populous prefecture and is located next to Tatori. Shimane is a mountainous region but is rich with history and mythology. The Shinto god Okuninushi, Okuninushi was believed to live in, in Izumo, one of the oldest pro provinces in Japan, and to this day the residents of Izumo honor the god regularly. This fig cookie is exclusive to the region. Cool. So really only made there. Do I smell fig? Uh, I'm not sure I would know if I was smelling fig so much. I mean, it looks like a cookie. Smells relatively sweet. I don't know if I could say that I smell fig. There is a slight fruity note to it, but it mainly just smells kind of sweet and buttery. Yeah. Mm. Ah, it's very like mm. soft and easy, flaky. Hmm. Okay, I get where the fig is in there. It doesn't present itself as something that I would be able to pick out as fig. 
And actually, to be honest, the way all the flavors are coming together, it kind of seems like banana, which is really weird. Yeah, the way the flavors are all coming together, it's a little banana-y, which I'm not big on. I like bananas. I don't like anything that tastes like banana, like artificial or derived. or I don't even like things with banana in it. I only like naked bananas, straight up naked bananas. Yeah, this one I'm not big on, as you can probably tell based off the banana-y thing. Plus the fig's not all that pronounced. It is buttery. It does have like a, a mid-level sweetness. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Whew. Okay, so we got three more things left. This one thing I'm going to love, I'm sure. This is Honey Senbai. You know me and my Senbais. I love Senbai. A crispy double-baked rice cracker topped with a soy honey glaze. <sighs> that sounds so good. That sounds amazing. I love these double-baked Senbai. They're my favorite. Like, I love Senbai in general, but the double-baked Senbai is always so good. It usually tastes like it's fried. It's usually got a really nice soy flavor to it. Ugh, so good. Oh, my God. It's that, that typical... i right, open it over here. Sorry if it gets real loud. That typical kind of fried-type smell with some sweetness to it, some saltiness, that very present soy this thing is gigantic by the way look at this it's like next to my head that's pretty big oh my gosh ah oh, smells sweet smells salty smells like soy it smells heavenly it smells fried mm. oh my the honey gives it the right amount of sweetness yeah, sweet and salty coming together in the best way possible with a nice soy flavor. It's got a really nice crunch to it. I know I'd say it's twice baked, but it seems like it's been like flash fried. And that is so tasty. Mm. Oh my God. I love these. I love these things. I've had ones like this in the, in the box uh, at least two other times before. I gotta put that down. I'll go nuts on that. I'll meet that whole thing later, though. My wife, like, likes those kind of, but she's not huge on it. She's always like, I'll taste it. I know it's good, but you're way more into it, so take it. And I will. Oh, oh so good. Mm, is that my favorite thing in here thus far? I don't know. I need to think about that. Got two more things. Um, I'm going to do, okay, so usually I do the hard candies last, but I'm not going to do the hard candies last because I'm going to do, I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to do the weird thing last. That'll be my last thing. Okay. So these candies are green tea candy, green tea candy made with Uji Kyoto green tea leaves and honey from Japan. And these are just part of the popular snacks portion. All right. I'm assuming I'm not going to like these because I'm not huge on green tea. Really, I'm not. Sorry, people. I know I'm big into Japanese stuff, but green tea is not one of those things. It's green. It's like a nice, deep forest green. Oh, God, it smells like green tea. It smells like, like matcha. Very vegetal, earthy. Eh. You know, it's not that bad. But it's weird. As a hard candy, being an American... Like you, in your, in your mind, hard candies taste a certain way. This is not very sugary because it's very much dominated by that kind of like vegetal earthy green tea. And it's almost a little bit menthol-esque. Like, you know how mint has that kind of like active um, feel in your mouth where it makes it tingle a slight bit? That, that has it. I'm going to set that aside now. That's enough of that. It's not as bad as I thought it would be for me personally. If you really like green tea and you really like those types of flavors, you might actually really like that. But it's not for me. Okay, so let's do this this final weird thing. This is part of the theme too. Uh, Totori pear jelly. Literally, it's a pack of like some sort of jelly thing. Like, look at this. It's jelly, dude. It's just, it's jelly. Look at this. 
and I guess you just like suck it out of there. I don't, this is weird. Um, Totori is located along the coast in central Japan and is the country's least populated prefecture. The word Totori in Japanese is formed from two kanji characters. The first, which is on here, I can't tell you that, means bird, and the second means to get. Early inhabitants as far back as 14,000 BC in the area made their living catching the region's plentiful waterfowl. This pear jelly is made by locally picked pear and is best eaten after chilling it in the fridge for a bit well i didn't know that so i guess i can chill the second one i have but this one will be tasted not chilled is there a way to actually open this i don't see like a little tear up area am i gonna be able to open this damn thing mm. i don't think so it doesn't have a little tear spot well that's dumb am i gonna be able to here i'm talking about having problems with my teeth that's probably not smart <laughs> but oh well i did get a little bit off the edge let me see if i can get some of the jelly coming out i can show you look at this look at this here comes the jelly you can see it right there here comes the jelly that's kind of gross <laughs> It's kind of gross. It's just, it's real milky looking. Oh. It tastes good. It's hard to get it out of that little spot because it is actually more, it's more like a jello consistency than it is like a more watery, like less viscous jelly. So like it clumps together quite a bit. I taste the pear, but it's actually pretty light. It's just like a nice, easy, light pear flavor. It comes off as kind of creamy, too, actually. It's like a creamy pear jelly. I mean, it's good. It's not really sweet, either. Like, with a lot of these Japanese snacks, it's not very sweet. I don't like it. It's good. I'm going to chill the other one and find out how that is, though. So, that's it, unfortunately, at almost a half an hour. It's almost always a half an hour on these things. But I have a good time. Hopefully, you have a good time. Um, what did you think about this? Are there any things you would have wanted to try? Anything that sounded gross to you? Uh, I think my biggest... I mean, obviously, that, that twice-baked senbai is, like, one of my favorite things in the box. But people who have been watching these, you know that that's, that's just going to be my personal... One of my favorites. But the, some of the things that really surprised me in a great way, those, I'll put them up here, the, uh, the black sesame cookie, very interesting flavors, very, very tasty. I love those, love those. That was probably my biggest wow, awesome surprise in this box. And then the Fukui peanut senbai down here. That was a really nice, awesome surprise. Hard to, to bite off though, I will say. Oh, and the burdock, those burdock crackers were really good. Like I said, they're like really easy to eat right there, the burdock crackers. And uh, yeah, um, but another really strong box. Yeah, those are my favorite things. Another really strong box. Like I said, Shigeki at Snacku doing a great job. People, I don't have any affiliation with Snacku or, um, you know, I don't have any referral codes or anything anything like that. I would just say, if you watch any of these unboxings and you're like, man, that looks good, that looks interesting, sign up for it. It's it's a good time. And you can start small. You can start with just the tasting box, which gives you a lot less. That's what I did. If you go far enough back on these videos, I was only doing the tasting box, which was just a little bit, but the stuff was so good, I just wanted more, so I upgraded to the regular box. And it's interesting, ugh, sorry, interesting because the tasting box comes from New York City, uh, I don't think it's necessarily New York City, New York, and the regular box comes from Japan. So uh, I guess the it's more regular of you knowing when you're going to get the tasting box because it's in state or in country. Uh, it's a little more broad and you don't 100% know where you're going to get it because it's coming from Japan because it has to go through customs and all that type of stuff. So um, but it's well worth, worth it, in my opinion. I love it. I always look forward to doing these. Like I said, even though it doesn't get a lot of views, I just love it. But anyway, thank you so much. Put some comments down there. Hit that like if you want to. And please, please, please subscribe if you like any of my videos. 
Anyway, thank you so much for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.